بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولو الأمر منكم and it was a reminder for myself and Abdul Qalaji Sadaifa wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence that to be in the ocean of nothingness that Allah grant us to enter into the presence of His most beloved. Its ticket is be nothing. Alhamdulillah the Kalam al-Awliya, the Nat Sharif is not something you just recite because it's entertainment and you never, really, never take payment for it. You lose the barakah in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad If someone wishes to give you hediyah and gift it's alhamdulillah but to put a fee before you open your mouth it's forbidden that I'll come for a fee, I'll recite for a fee. It's not for ishq and muhabbat and we lose the presence. So you choose dunya, even an act of akhirah has a choice, is it really for akhirah or for dunya? And only Allah come into our life and they teach us, people must support, people must give but everything is free. If their hearts are working they give but can be you have an admission, so no you can't come if unless you, you gave, I won't recite unless you pay, you lose the barakah of this immense presence. They come and teach us these manners, this adab, this ishq and this love has a mannerism and good character, that good character grants us this audience. What audience? Prophet described, my ulama, my awliya because there's two different versions and my inheritors, they're like the prophets of Bani Israel. They're like the Prophets of Bani Israel. Now we went before but requires to contemplate. What Sayyidina Yusuf achieved with all his khidmat, all his service and all the testing that Allah As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Because he was dressed with the beautific lights of Sayyidina Muhammad Every Prophet in Qur'an represents a qas, a story and a reality of Sayyidina Muhammad because all the floors of the building describe the building. That all of this creation is in an ocean called Muhammadun Rasulullah and La ilaha illallah is the power but we are not in and partners with Allah Every prophecy and prophet comes as a characteristic, a description, an example and Allah chose for Qur'an the best of examples. So his nation would one day figure, what was the beauty of Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah says, I'm now going to tell you a very beautiful story. And the story of Sayyidina Yusuf that immense beauty that people cut themselves to see because they couldn't imagine, is this something from heaven? Is this angelic? Because this is from the level of the soul. We live in a world that's different now, a world now that they want to 
paint themselves as beautiful and hide the ugliness of their soul, right? The more and more you go towards dunya people, the more they're painted. Why? Because there's a demon undercover, a darkness and darkness upon a soul that hiding and they don't want that to be seen by people, they cover it. But what had Allah for the heavenly people? They have so much light emanating from their soul, it comes out of every pore of their being, from their eyes, their ears, everything from them is a light that affects the hearts and souls of other people and what we call a juzba. There's an energy coming out, those who don't have it they're very jealous of this reality. So they'll make all sorts of teachings and all sorts of propagations that don't be attracted to these types of people which we call awliya. And they emit these lights and this beauty, Sayyidina Yusuf represents this beauty. Sayyidina Ibrahim represents the companionship to the Divine the Presence. Sayyidina Musa represents the speaking to the Divine the Presence. Sayyidina Isa salam represents like the ruh and the soul of the Divine the Presence. All of those are Muhammadan haqqaiqs. When Sayyidina Musa wanted to see, who am I talking to? And that's why in the Naat Johnny Rahma asked Musa who he was seeing. So means the vision of Sayyidina Muhammad was enough once in the life of Sayyidina Musa and makes to be from the great prophets of Allah because he was speaking to his Rabb his authority. So the vision of Sayyidina Musa because he speaks to his authority, he speaks to Sayyidina Muhammad and wanted a vision of that authority and Allah granted that gift. And these knots are coming to teach all creation was sacrificing for a glimpse of that reality. Now come to the Muhammadan nation whom they sit and learn in that presence. To be with their soul in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad taking the fires, the lights and the emanations of Sayyidina Muhammad and their knowledges and uloom are coming. They're all Kalimullah. They're all Qalilullah and they're all supported by Ruhullah because all of that is Sayyidina Muhammad These nuts are teaching us that, do you know what Allah has given to you? Have you tried to get it? Because the learned men of God have, those were the Prophets of Bani Israel. All the Prophets you know are the Prophets of Bani Israel. And all that Allah describes of them in Qur'an, those were to achieve a presence in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because Nabi Musa wanted to clarify, who am I talking to when I'm talking? He was talking to Sayyidina Muhammad because there is no talking from Allah unless it goes to Sayyidina Muhammad Allah speaks to the heart of Prophet and Sayyidina Muhammad in his light and his world of soul speaks to all the Prophets of Allah to all the angels of Allah everything. Because Allah is a hidden treasure in the world of lights and paradises Allah is nowhere to be seen, there's no likeness unto Allah So Prophet described for, him, for us, Abu was a Prophet before Adam. Risalat is ancient, 
and all the angels, they enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and get all their commands, bi-ithnillah, malaika wa ruh bi-ithni rabbikum kullun amr. With the permission of Allah this is all happening because Allah created the light of Sayyidina Muhammad to be known by all guidance. All knowledges, every command, kullun amr, kullun amr comes from that reality. There's never a point in which you move aside Muhammadun Rasulullah and you go to the presence of Allah where would that be? That would be a shirk because where would you be in that reality? That you could be between La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah No, that from Allah's light comes the reality and the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah So then imagine then the immensities of these lights and these realities. You want to be beautiful? Keep the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah dress you with the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf These are all the, the, the gifts Allah gave to other nations but His own nation not coming to get them. In the last days Prophet described, they would forget me, barely mention me and think that they have a way directly to Allah and they call themselves Ahl Qur'an in which they left out the hadith and sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad It's already happening in this world because that's Dajjal's system because he's scared of Sayyidina Muhammad So the nation has access to all these maqams. You want to be Kalimullah to talk because awliya have yaqeen, they're not talking to who they don't know who they're talking to. So Sayyidina Musa is called Kalimullah and realize Allah says in Qur'an, gave the whole qasa, Ya Rabbi want to see you, you cannot see me. I'll show you Ayatul Akbar, my greatest sign, went out, he saw that light. Out cold, reset, we just released video. His system had to be rebooted, a death, mawt qabl al mawt, everyone must taste of death to reach Sayyidina Muhammad Doesn't matter, his holy companions, the stations can't be imagined. Sayyidina Musa thinking salam that he's alive. Not for this reality, you got to get mount to qabl al mount. Saw and died, rebooted, came back up, now capable of understanding that reality. So means then our life is to capture all of these realities, all these lights and all these blessings. To be Khalilullah is to keep the companionship and the love of Prophet which we describe this is the station of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and this is a tariqah of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq to keep that friendship and companionship that can only occur with truthful character because the companionship doesn't work with crookedness, cheating and stealing and lying. So the tariqahs come to teach manners, have good manners, have good character. You're going to keep the companionship of the shaykh is a training. How you behave and conduct yourself with these guides, you gain the access of these holy companions that begin to teach, you want to be with Khalil rahman you want to be in that companionship with the love of Prophet do your durood, your salawat and your good deeds and know that He's always with you and that He always sees you. 
You don't talk harshly with somebody, you don't threaten to hurt somebody. You know the people who they do their practices and they even threaten to hurt people when they talk. Do you think that Prophet is with you like that? Means that companionship immediately stops. The khuluq is the only thing that keeps everything. It's not no because I pray a lot, Prophet is with me. They, they know that's not even that's true and shaitan even knows that true. So they say, let's go higher because the bigger the lie the more believable Allah's with me. Allah's with you, holy moly. Nobody is with you. Prophet is not with you. They know they can't make that lie. They, they can act really bad, character can be bad, but never they come to themselves and say, no Prophet is with me. Because shaitan said, don't say that, <laughs> they're gonna know right away you're lying. So they go even bigger and say, Allah's with me. And that's why you see them talking very little about Prophet Why? He's not with them. It doesn't walk with ones whom their character is not correct. Character has to be Siddiq, truthful. Doesn't mean they make mistakes, yeah of course they make mistakes and they repent but their life is about the khuluq, the character, conduct yourself in a proper manner. Especially outside of the tariqah confines when you're dealing with people, Prophet is still walking with you. You're making salawats, you're taking the awrads, the zikrs and the training and don't be a hypocrite. The Prophet say, oh, tell them stop making it because this is hypocrisy. No, we think to ourselves, I'm making durood, I'm doing my awrad, I'm doing all these things. No doubt the light of Prophet I'm trying to keep that companionship so that I can be like Sayyidina Ibrahim I can keep the friendship of Prophet You don't think he has a friendship with his nation? Don't you want to be like Sayyidina Musa talking to your Lord, to your Rabb? All day long they're talking to Prophet Whatever coming into their heart, whatever their concerns, whatever their worries, because they make their durood, they make their salawat, they keep themselves in wudu, they keep themselves clean. All day long they talk with Sayyidina Muhammad And when necessary for an audience they merely close their eyes, not close their eyes but they begin their tafakkur and they enter into the presence of Prophet Now understand Sayyidina Musa and the awliya of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad what the Prophets and what Prophet <laughs> was trying to give because of humility. The, my ulama and my awliya, they're inheritors, they're like. Because you're humble, I'm not going to say, those Prophets were trying to get near me and I'm for my nation and all I'm concerned about was for my nation. But my nation doesn't choose to draw themselves to me so that they can be Khalilullah, they can be Kalimullah, they can become Ruhullah and that was the study of the lataif of the heart. Because those Prophets come and teach us, you want from that character? Talk to the, the one whom is the authorized sultan of Allah So if you are talking to Prophet how is that Allah? Right? That's the hadith al-Qudsi where Allah describes how that happens. If you're truly in your connection through your shaykhs taught you and that you're connected and you're ashamed to look to the face of Prophet the Hayba is immense that I'm just at your feet making my durood, making my salawats and say, how Shaykh then from that presence 
you understood it to be Allah because Allah clarified in Hadith Al-Qudsi, I will be your hearing, this is not about me and you. That Hadith is Allah describing who Prophet is. So no doubt he did all his fard, everything else he's doing for Allah is through love and voluntary worshipness. Hadith Al-Qudsi is describing the reality of Prophet that Allah is His hearing, Allah is His seeing, Allah is His speaking, Allah is His breathing, Allah is His hands, Allah is His feet. So much so He is Rabbaniyun and you better believe He has power of kun fayakun because He wills what Allah wills. He speaks what Allah wants and then Allah in Surah Al-Najm says this, Uhi Al-Qur'an. He does not speak except that it's the will of Allah Any breath coming from the mouth of Prophet Qudrat Al-Ilahiyya because Allah clarified, is Uhi Al-Qur'an. He doesn't speak because Allah created this reality to represent Him. Gave this to the nation, they read the book and they think it's a storybook of prophets from old. Wow, oh look at this, this prophet was talking, this one was this. And only are wondering, why aren't you doing that? How much Sayyidina Musa after he witnessed, this is what this not is saying, he witnessed one time the reality of Prophet reset. That's it, I stop everything. He, he left his risalat. He took his murid, we're going until I become rushed. I want that reality, I want the Muhammadan reality. And we said where two rivers meet, I want La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So these are the gifts Allah gave to the nation. But they're not Prophets, they're not going to call themselves Prophets but Prophet gives the honour of the reality that whatever those Prophets were trying to achieve was from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So my nation draw near to me. And these nuts then describe this beatific, oh if, if the world was killing themselves for one vision, imagine those whom sit in that reality. Now they're not coming and saying that, I don't know how I got this high rank, it's not from my charity, my giving and my zakat. But one nazar from this reality lifted me into a completely different abode. If all the Prophets were trying to achieve, how the ashiqeen just whoop, with a vision of Sayyidina Muhammad how they can achieve. What can they achieve of immense, immense realities? immense lights, immense blessings. This is an unimaginable gift from Allah This holy month opens the power of 27. So we want to now understand this is the month of Milad al-Nabi This is in the Sultanate of Nine. We went in Surah Tawbah because the Qur'an is guiding us on a path for awliya, what we call Shams al-Arifeen. The Qur'an opens base 9, Surah Tawbah come, 9.40 verse 40, enter the cave that Prophet went with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq the cave is the entrance into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Second 9 Surah 18, Ashab al-Kaf. The cave, which calf? The cave of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's heart. What happens then third month of Rabbi al-Awwal Surah al-Naml, 27th Surah, why all holy events? on 27th because of this reality. The kingdom of Allah 
its gate on dunya thabi wal ishreen. Oh, Grand Shaykh said, by the secret of two and seven. Why we celebrate the 27th Laylatul Qadr, Israhi wal Maraj, all the holy events on 27th because it's a gate to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So we come then, this is the, the month of the 27th, the third month You're the third month, Rabbil Awwal, the 27 is the reality and then Surat Al-Nam, the dress for the holy month, Sifat Al-Basir, the 27th name Allah Sifat Al-Basir, the one whom is all seeing. So now what happens on Mawlid Nabi because like tasbih you have to write and understand these things. That on the 27th month the door of the kingdom, Sifat al-Basir, those whom they want their hearts to open to see the heavens. It's a link to the Milad al-Nabi The key is Isma Rasul al-Mudathir, the one whom shows patience in tyranny, Sabr al-Jameel. Prophet's name and mudathir, the characteristic is to have patience, good character. That's the key for Sifat al Basir, the ones who want to see, they have to have good character, sabr. But patience doesn't come when things are good, patience comes when times are difficult. People are difficult. As a result, their akhlaq, their khuluq is rewarded. That's what we taught in last month's Surat al Kahf. Every time rooks come to us, the dog was being dressed by Hayba. The Prophet giving the reward from the heavens for patience, for patience, for patience. And they begin to be dressed by these realities. Now we go to Surat Al-Nam to see what Allah dressing for us in this holy month to get an understanding of what we were talking about of these lights. Ajisha, let's, let's do at least first three verses, 27, Surah 27 all the way from 1 to verse 3 inshaAllah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طاسين تلك آيات القرآن وكتاب مبين هدى وبشرى للمؤمنين الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم بالآخرة هم يوقنون صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم وبلغت الرسول الكريم Seems like we talked about this yesterday your near just flies because now as this cave is opening Allah is giving to us because these, these surahs are guiding us into the reality of where we're headed into the heart of Prophet Allah then gives to us the realities of ta and seen. Ta we know from Tahir al-Hadi. Sayyidina Taha, Tahir al Hadi, most purified guide of Allah in Hidayat. This guide is so pure 
it's a fire because fire burns all impurity, right? The beatific reality that Allah is giving to us is the immensity of its purity, it's not a light because light is a reflection. Allah drawing our reality towards this is a fire, this is a, a source of light, nurun Allah nur, not of the east, not of the west but bringing its own reality. So the nur Allah describes even more detail about that, Sirajan Munira. But this ta and its purified reality like a purified fire. And the seen is the secret and source of all knowledges and secrets, the sir. That this immense fire, this immense reality of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that you are not going to be moving into, Qur'an is now drawing us into that reality. And Allah giving that the sir and the secret of every reality is here. Because the next set of nine is ya seen, which is the heart. Ta seen is the purified fire, and the seen is the secret. Because the seen has ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen, haqqu yaqeen. And every knowledge has a secret. And every secret has a knowledge in it. Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asrar. The light of every secret, and He is the secret of every light. Ta seen. Just for us to understand what is this fire being made out of, Allah Tahir al Hadi. There is nothing more pure than this. Because of its purity Allah describes later in Qur'an that I created creation in truth. Because I didn't use a, a dirty light, a mixed light, a crooked light, I didn't make a fake light. Like we said last night, everything with them they talk of deception. Allah said, no this creation is created in truth by immensely purified light that you can't imagine, I can't imagine. We don't have any understanding of that purity. It's purity beyond imagination and it is nurul anwar wa sirat al asrar, it is the source of every secret and every secret finds its reality in that. It's comprised of the seen, it's comprised of ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen, haqq yaqeen. Means what? If you're not fed ilmu yaqeen, you're not going to ever reach this fountain and this reality. If you're sitting and the knowledge is being taught to you or not ilmu yaqeen, how are you going to reach any of this? Oh they just take me, no they don't take anybody. Has to be a dress upon the soul, right? How are you going to catch fire if I don't put the fire on you? He says, no you're just going to jump onto me. How is he going to jump onto you? So how you catch fire is that ilmu yaqeen has to start coming towards you because knowledges are food. So we feed, are we being fed from realities? Where I sit in the associations of ilmu yaqeen, not the associations of nonsense talk. But knowledges that are actually feeding my soul from the oceans of certainty. We've described this a hundred times but you never know when somebody clicks in their heart, I, I think I understand what you're finally talking about. Ilmu yaqeen, then the shaykh has to be, if he's the shaykh of this reality, not every shaykh is like this, not a, every corner store has the same. The shaykh has to then be qualified and have ijazah to teach you, aynu yaqeen. Aynu yaqeen in which to receive these ancient knowledges, ayn, and teach you how to open your ayn, 
how to open your vision so that you're taking realities and opening through your heart and through your soul is the only place that can contain this reality. You put it on the paper as a placeholder to burn into your soul, not on your phone, not anywhere else. This ilmu yaqeen as the shaykhs are talking from their soul is a laser being burned into the soul of those whom listen. In presence, time and distance means nothing. Wherever they are, whenever they turn that talk on, that laser begins to etch itself and burn into the soul of that servant. Then they have to train with the shaykh, that's when you understood the cryptos and the technology, Ayn yaqeen, right? You got the app version but you have to still connect to the storage units because the encryption's in the shaykh's soul. If you don't make your connection, connect your heart so that from his heart he can reach into your heart and begin to configure your encryption. So far you only heard it through your ears. But as soon as you make your tafakkur for Ayn yaqeen, the vision of certainty, well that must be a very authorized station to gain certainty. So that when you're connecting their light comes, their light begins to scan, see the correctness of the individual. Before it can begin to download there has to be codes being coming in. If you're off on your codes, your seed words are off, the wallet doesn't open. And then they tell you, keep practicing, keep giving, keep doing, keep doing your khidmat. Then ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen. What it made for you, an entire new universe is being made for you. Now the sciences will come and begin to teach you that, right? That in any moment entire universes can come into existence. Your whole new, what are they they're, they're calling it? Their, their sciences have this information now, like parallel universe. In one dimension you're here, you don't know anything, you go to Taco Bell. As soon as they begin to give you knowledges, as soon as you learned how to meditate, something now became a haqq for you, we've talked about lateral and forward movement. You just merely moved through a parda, it's a completely different existence Allah gives to you, completely different. Your knowledges and realities are dressing you in a completely different understanding. Based on that your association of your soul now with completely different individuals from Allah's believing servant, Buddha, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtadul Akhyar, Malaika wa Jinn. The knowledges that come change the vibration of an individual of haqqaiqs. They open the ayn and their vision, they make the connection, every haqq that Allah addresses them they're moving in different universes in pardas. And that's why people look at them 20 years later they don't even know, who are you or you look like you came from a different planet. Yeah literally you're in a different existence but you have the ability to move back and forth. You have the ability to move in space and time in these pardas and these realities. Some people meditate and hours go missing. It's a timeless dimension. If they connect their heart and Prophet and keep them, by the time they come back they don't understand where four hours went. Because in one you're sitting here on the carpet, where are Allah taking you with your soul and all the others? One version was only described of paradise, that the halaqahs are circles of paradise. A circle of paradise has no time. So what's happening now in this halaqah? Do you leave the halaqah? It's paradise. How long have you been in that paradise and in that halaqah? What did Allah address you in that halaqah? In the circle of paradise. You only know from your physical reality. 
So you come back saying, okay, I got a little bit tired, I went home. But those whom their hearts are open, they experience many things in these halaqahs. They go many places. Some come back with lots of information because the body is just a vehicle, the rider's on a journey. But most people they're locked in their cars, they're just sitting there in their car. But the car was just, the body was just a vehicle to come. You were supposed to open the heart and the soul and travel. So means these are immense realities of haqqaiq, so ta'seen is an immense fire in reality. Right? This was then the fire where Sayyidina Musa saw when he set out, he saw fire. Oh there's not a fire, right? And then Allah described that Nabi Musa he saw, I saw a fire, I'm going to go to that fire to get some warmth and to get some knowledges. So when people say, well who said Allah is a fire? So Qur'an says Allah <laughs> gave an example of a fire. This is the very fire and portal that Sayyidina Musa saw. One time when Allah was giving to Ummat Muhammad come in, live in here, operate in here and this is your abode. What was given to Sayyidina Musa was one time. And that's why Prophet described, no there are people in my community, these people of tafakkur. One hour of their tafakkur is like 70 years of worship for other people because they are continuously in that portal of the fire in which Allah said, this is a holy place and I am Allah. Why? Because this is the purified fire of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad what Allah swears by this fire now? Yeah, it's heavy and long, huh? Taseen, tilka ayat al Qur'an. But the subject is taseen, they, they write in English very bad. These are the verses of the Qur'an, no, that's not what it says. Allah's swearing by taseen. For us to understand what is taseen? It's an ayah of Qur'an. This fire you're seeing is a sign of the Qur'an because the heart of Prophet must be an immensely purified fire to represent the Divinely speech of Allah Manzil Qur'an, the Qur'an is coming out from the heart of Prophet in the world of light. What type of fire is that heart? What type of purity is that heart that Allah will speak through it? Continuously, continuously everything is the power of Qur'an is coming from the heart of Prophet So Allah is now swearing by it that this is Ayatul Qur'an. The fire, the, the one that has no mass is the sign of Qur'an. And the light that you see of him wal kitab al mubeen The Prophet so is the kitab Allah, the clear book of Allah kitab al mubeen Means that which you see is the kitab al mubeen the clear book because the soul that you're going into. But the fire? It's not created, Allah's words are not created, it's Allah's ancient words moving through a flame in, in the heart of Prophet that is a sign of Qur'an that you're entering in now to the immense realities of Holy Qur'an. Entering into the heart of Prophet not something small, it can't even be imagined and whom traverse that reality with their soul. And their life is to enter into it and come back out to bring people back into it. Keep coming in and out of that fire, in and out of that fire to bring people back. But these are not normal people, they must be khawas. 
They must be of a, a nature that only Allah knows whom He created for that reality and why He created them for that reality. But the fire must touch them and they must be burned by its reality. And that reality when it burn you, ignites your reality. Others see the fire like a fire of Jahannam. Oh we're not going to go there, if you, if you go in that direction no, you know. This fire is the fire of purity like the sun and the sun is the example of this reality. It illuminates and gives light, it nourishes and, and gives energies. They call heliocentric, they were so confused by the immense power of this reality they used to worship it. Because they lost guidance and connection to awliya. So awliya will come and say, no, no, no matter how great it is, Allahu Akbar. Why we say Allahu Akbar in our salah? Because we don't know where we are in our salah. But Allahu Akbar is referenced to wherever you're entering, Allah is greater. In every greatness that you're entering into this miraj, Allahu Akbar. That Unimaginable, unimaginable realities of Allah Because you see the fire, you, if you didn't know better you think, oh you're going to start going and worshipping. And Prophet gave to her, no, 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 this is all beautiful, Allahu Akbar. Allah is beyond our understandings and the only one whom deserves worshipness. But what He gave as address to this creation, to the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad not imaginable. We're not talking about what Allah wanted when He created a heart to represent Him and to bring out His Holy Qur'an and what we call Manzil Qur'an. We pray that Allah give us sabr and patience to understand and a heart that can reach towards these comp contemplations because they meditate and contemplate. And read a little slower. Ta'asin tilka ayat al Qur'an wa kitab al Mubin. The Prophet is the Kitab Allah, is the book of Allah where all realities are stored. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa, illa shafa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bi Muhammad al Mustafa, bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.